Hello, Internet. This is Lord Mad Dog, and I'm coming at you with another update to my Souls Like project. And this update has a lot of things in, in it, so let's get straight to it. Okay, the first thing I've updated is the bow system. If you remember last time, I didn't have the bow animated. Now I have the bow animated, so it draws back when the player draws back you can see it pulls the whole bow and not only that the character will twist and turn with the bow up and down he's no longer a stiff block he moves with the bow so it makes a really nice animation i knew i could do it with a uh, the animation for the bow as with a skeletal mesh i just didn't want to have to use a skeletal mesh because that means that every single other bow you add has to use my skeletal mesh to animate properly but you know, it's just some things you had to do. So now it bow animates and you can add another bow by t getting it and taking it to any 3D modeling program and skinning it to my skeletal mesh, which I hate, I hate skinning. Paint, painting, painting skid weights is really, really a pain. If you ever done any of that, you know it's really a pain. But it's now possible. You can easily add any bow if you're willing to take the time. And I've already added one other bow, but I'm not going to show you that right now because there's a lot of things we need to get to. And what else do we need to get to next? Well, we need to get to the mini map system. Up here in the corner, you will see that we have a new mini map. And this shows the area around you. It also shows enemies around you. And if you click on it, it'll uh, you hover over it, you'll show you the name of item. If there, I, I have quest, like a quest icon, you can see a quest icon. Uh, the, these enemies over here don't have names or it'd be showing their names. The re there's a reason why they don't have names. And I'll show you that in a sec because they're basically just showcase uh, NPCs. Okay. And so if you click on it, you'll see right there, a little beacon will show up and that you know, you can you can read the name Beacon up there in the corner. So this is basically just a precursor to my map system, which I will be adding when I do the dialogue system, uh, which I am going to delay into actually update Unreal Engine because up I found out the Unreal Engine uh, 5.3, I think it was. Or is it 5.4? Actually added its own conversation system with, uh, with a what you see is what you get type of widget. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to upgrade. We'll have to upgrade. But right, I've got to do other things before I can actually upgrade to a newer version to use the dialogue system. Now, this uh, mini map system was originally something in Dialogue Tree, which was made by Master uh dial chan yeah mastered by dino chan i think his name was uh i have updated it to work with my system it was a five-year-old system and i've updated it to work with this one and i uh, did a decent amount of things here and there but it's still a lot still sort of his uh if free dino uh dialogue tree plugin uh that he was handing out so uh it's uses a little bit of things for him but if you're interested in his dialogue system it was very complicated and uh well yeah, so his system, that's why I didn't use his. And I want to use the new standard thing from uh, Unreal Engine that's coming out. Now, what else did I do? Well, I added, well, I'll just show you. Now, these are the NPCs that I'm talking about, the ones that don't have any names, and why? There you go. <laughs> I added a backstab system. Oops. There we are. <laughs> Yes, a backstab system. So you can walk up to an enemy that doesn't notice you and stab them in the back. Right now I have it being a little bit um, too easy, I think, to stab in the back. You can sometimes get it on accident in combat. Uh, I will have to um, probably update it to be less forgiving right now. Any anywhere in the back, one like a whole 90 degrees in the back area, 180 degrees. What is that? 180 to 190. Yeah. Like the whole back area, if you're off to even off to the side a little bit, you can hit them. Uh, eventually, I'll probably narrow it down to be like a 45 degree angle that you have to be. And so if you kill them while stabbing them, which I just got a critical, <laughs> it, it, it works perfectly. And you just lay there dead. And the dialogue. So it took a little bit to get in there, but I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Uh, and I'm added uh, in the. In, in the characters themselves, you have a little scene component that you can move around to make sure that to, for every NPC you add, it'll fix the right place where you want to be able to backstab them from. So if you got a bigger, uh, bigger, you know, like um, golem or orc type creature, and you want to be able to backstab them, you can move where that's at. You can even change the animation. It's all the all the stuff is right there, to easily editable to be able to add new characters. So that turned out really well. Now, what else did I do? I added placeable items. 
Yes, you can now have inventory items that you can place anywhere in the world. So you double click them and then you uh, just like with build mode, you place, move, change size and whatnot. Now, if you change size, you've got to have two, two of the same item uh, to be able to, or, or if you make it smaller, not so much, but it, it, if you make it bigger, then you have to have two. If you make it th three, four, five. Yeah. So uh, it, it follows the normal rules of placing items when uh, uh, cost wise. So here we go. I place that, you know, see it's still in my inventory and I can actually go ahead and click it again and uh, set another uh, thing. What's uh, another blueprint to build. Now, however, if the build blueprint is not built within five minutes, the blueprint will delete itself out of the world. That way you don't have a whole bunch of these little gray items sticking around all over the place. Cause I know sometimes you're like, no, actually I don't want it there. I kind of want it over here. And then that all self delete itself after five minutes. So we can go ahead and build this here. And you see here, it's just a targeting dummy and boom. Now to get your item back, you can destroy it. That thing has 100, uh, 1,500 health because there's a target dummy. So I'm not going to stand here for five minutes beating on it to get it back. I'm just going to go you and show you with a Persian rug. Here we are. Now I'm going to build the Persian rug. There we are. I built the Persian rug. And now if I want that in back, I'll just destroy it. And I'll grab my Persian rug. And I got my Persian rug. And that item, this that little blueprint area there will delete itself in five minutes. Or I can go ahead and rebuild it. And it just as if it was there permanently. Now these will save in the game. So if you save and load, they will be there just like any other placeable build items. And with like, I'll show you like any other placeable build item. If you make it bigger, it costs twice the same items. So we're going to go ahead and scale it up by one. And I can place both items. And you see here, it's no longer my inventory, but if I go ahead and destroy it, it drops two. There's a little bit of lag there because <laughs> uh, I'm recording at the same time as having this full screened. And so right there, I got both back my Persian rugs. And that's the placeable build. And like I said, these can be placed anywhere in the world, whatever you want to do with them. You can even build, if you want to cheese the game and build a, a bridge across someplace you're not supposed to be able to walk across, that's fine by me. I'll just have to make sure when I build my world that I take that into retrospect. Okay, so that is the placeable build items. Now, what else did I do? Yeah, I added hit stop. This, this thing's a bit laggy here. I'll go ahead and replace that because it takes five minutes to delete itself and I don't want to keep on stepping on it. Here we go. I added hit stop to the game. So you see there, when I hit the item, it shakes a little. I don't know if you can see it very clearly. You should be able to. You see how it shakes a little bit? And my own camera shakes a little bit. And if you're fighting actual NPCs, I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. Let's go ahead and see if we argue to Argo some of these guys here. Now, if they hit me, you see there, my character is shaking. My camera shakes a little bit. And if they get a critical like that guy did, they got a critical of 13. The number got bigger. Uh, so that makes a nice little juicy feeling. When hitting them, if I were to hit them, I get they they get jittered just like I get jittered, and if I get slowed down ever so slightly, so you can feel the hit, the impact. I may need to adjust some of the settings, but right now I'm pretty pretty pleased with the way it works. <laughs> like I said, I need to adjust the, the backstab because right there I actually got a backstab because he was down. <laughs> It's a little bit too forgiving. But you can get backstabs in the middle of combat. It's a little hard to have All those stupid things are spawning. Too much light from them. <laughs> That's just my my settings. Here you go. Kill this kill. So yeah, that's the hit stop system. Uh, and I think that's actually the last of the updates, but as I said, that's a decent amount of updates for this build. I will go ahead and show you exactly a little bit more about the hit stop system because I'm pretty proud of how well that turned out. So let's go ahead and escape and hit F11 to get exit full screen mode combat system. So basically when you get when you hit an enemy, um, it will get the enemy you hit. It will choose uh, whether or not to hit stop power. So if it's a flinch or knockback or knockback 
down or critical, it changes the settings. So if you get just a flinch, it's not going to be very big. If you get a critical, the, no the number will get bigger and the jitter will get bigger. And the hit spark, which is your effect of actually hitting, you know, like um, the particles coming off your sword bigger and whatnot. So what happens is the the enemy character jitters a slightly and the players or the, the, per, the hitters weapon jitters ever so slightly as well. And that's pretty much the hit stop system. It, pretty simple coding, but I think it adds a nice bit of juice to the game. That's what they call it. Juice. I may need to adjust the settings to make them a little bigger or a little less. Tell me what you think about them. You test it out yourself. Anyway, that is pretty much everything for this update. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, like, shares, and comments are always welcome. Lord Mad Dog, signing off.